For HIMS is a grammatically questionable brand of off-label generic pharmaceutical solutions for erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, hair loss, skin health, and more. In this video, we're going to look at each of the three options that for HIMS offers for treating premature ejaculation, or PE, and investigate the scientific evidence for this usage. But first, let's understand what off-label and generic pharmaceutical solutions really mean. Basically, drugs are licensed with a specific use attached to them. Pharmaceutical companies decide on the licensing route for each drug according to licensing complexities, market potential, and the proven efficacy of the drug in that specific area. And what often happens is sometimes these drugs are actually very effective in a number of other areas beyond what they're marketed, known, and approved for. This use of a pharmaceutical drug is called off-label use. Generic drugs are simply pharmaceutical drugs where the patent has expired and therefore the drug company that created it can no longer monopolize the production and sale of the item. Typically this is when consumer options broaden vastly and price drops substantially. For example, Pfizer's patent on Viagra ran out in 2020. They still market their Viagra branded option, but since 2020, Sildenafil, the active ingredient of Viagra, became available for other brands and manufacturers to market. Sildenafil is one of the many generic and off-label drugs offered by ForHims.com, or Hims and Hers Health Incorporated. ForHims is basically a telemedicine company that focuses on men's health and personal care. The company offers products and services such as prescription medications, wellness products, and personal care items through an online platform and consultation with licensed healthcare professionals. Its main focus is on men's health issues such as hair loss, erectile dysfunction, and skin care. I'm not associated with them and I never use their products. This video is purely about looking at the pharmaceutical options that they offer to help treat premature ejaculation and seeing what clinical evidence exists to support their off-label use for this purpose. So the first of the three product options offered by For Hims for premature ejaculation is sertraline. Sertraline is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor or SSRI antidepressant medication. It's used to treat depression, obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, panic disorder, post-traumatic -trauma stress disorder or PTSD, social anxiety disorder and premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It's a very powerful drug and some noted side effects as highlighted clearly also on the Fahim's website include an increase in suicidal thoughts and other mood related changes. So what evidence exists to support sertraline's use for premature ejaculation? And with the additional risks in mind, what does the cost benefit analysis look like for taking it to address premature ejaculation? A 2005 study titled Sertraline vs. Placebo in Patients with Premature Ejaculation, a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled study, provided a dosage of 50 milligrams a day to 60 patients over an eight-week period and concluded that a significant increase in ejaculatory latency was observed with an average increase of approximately three minutes. Note, for HIMS reference a potential 400% increase in ejaculatory latency for this product, so bearing in mind that surveys and studies have concluded that the average intercourse duration for humans is between five and seven minutes. This does sit just about in line with the findings of this study. Note also that the administered dose of 50 milligrams per day is also exactly the same dose as what for HIMS offer on their subscription program for sertraline. Another study performed in 2006 titled a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial of sertraline in the treatment of premature ejaculation administered doses of 50 milligrams per day over eight weeks across 68 patients and concluded that a significant increase in ejaculatory latency was observed in the sertraline group compared to the placebo group with an average increase of approximately two minutes. This video is sponsored by Verifier Lab. Did you know that a recent study across various food supplements found that over 31% were contaminated by highly damaging or illegal substances, that 51% didn't adequately break down to allow the body to actually absorb the active ingredients, and that over 46% were not accurately labeled. In some instances, they contained no active ingredients. That's zero milligrams of whatever strength they were advertising on the front of the label, zero. Verify Lab, a food supplement verification specialist, bringing safety and transparency to the food supplement industry to help you separate the bad brands from the good brands.
Just send them a sample of the supplement that you take, tell them what you'd like them to check for. It could be to confirm the supplement's strength, the core ingredient, to check for damaging contaminants, for microbial agents, allergens, almost anything. And you'll get your lab results emailed back within seven days to tell you what you want to know about your supplement. Check them out at verifierlab.com and use the code UNCOVERED for 30% off your first order. Now back to the video. A third study also supported the use of sertraline for the treatment of PE, titled The Effect of Sertraline on Premature Ejaculation, a placebo-controlled study, and conducted in 2007. This study also administered a daily dose of 50 milligrams of sertraline for four weeks across 40 patients and concluded that a significant increase in ejaculatory latency was observed in the sertraline group compared to the placebo group, with an average increase of approximately two minutes. However, do note there are an equal number of clinical studies that show that sertraline has absolutely no effect on premature ejaculation, and these studies are also more recent and slightly more extensive in terms of study duration than the three that support sertraline's use for PE. A 2009 study titled a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial for sertraline for premature ejaculation took 40 patients and gave them 50 milligrams daily dose of sertraline for eight weeks and concluded that there was no significant difference in ejaculatory latency when observed against the placebo group. A 2010 study titled a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study of sertraline in the treatment of premature ejaculation administered 50 milligrams of sertraline daily to 60 patients over 12 weeks, the longest study duration that I've found in this field, and concluded that there was no significant increase in ejaculatory latency when observed against the placebo group. And also a study in 2011 titled a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study of sertraline in the treatment of premature ejaculation also administered 50 milligrams of sertraline daily to 60 patients over eight weeks and concluded that there was no significant difference in ejaculatory latency when observed against the placebo group. The reason for these conflicting studies may well lie with the underlying causes of PE, as mentioned earlier, sertraline is a drug designed to alter mental state through so the manipulation of serotonin and dopamine levels in the brain. It basically increases serotonin and simultaneously dampens dopamine. So if PE is largely a result of psychological influence such as performance anxiety, then sertraline may well be effective at resolving issues for these individuals. If, on the other hand, PE is occurring as a, as a result of something more physiological, meaning a problem with the proper and effective functioning of parts of the body involved in the process of ejaculation, then sertraline may well have little to no effect on these people. Considering the risks involved with taking sertraline, you have to take into account a number of factors before you decide to try this as a remedy to PE. Things such as the severity of your PE and what you believe or have discovered through further clinical investigation and tests to be the cause of your PE and really use this understanding to make a clear and considered decision. Now onto the next solution for PE offered by Fahims, sildenafil. Sildenafil is the generic alternative to Viagra, and by that I mean the cheaper alternative. Viagra is sildenafil. Sildenafil is the active ingredient in Viagra. So its on-label use is for the treatment of erectile dysfunction, but what about its off-label use for premature ejaculation? A randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine in 2006 found that sildenafil citrate, 50 milligrams, taken one hour before sexual activity significantly increased the time to ejaculation and improved overall sexual satisfaction compared to placebo. The study enrolled 66 men with premature ejaculation and it was conducted over a 12-week period. Another randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study published in the International Journal of Impotence Research in 2005 found that sildenafil at 100 mg taken one hour before sexual activity increased the time to ejaculation and improved overall sexual satisfaction compared to placebo. The study enrolled 64 men with premature ejaculation and was conducted over a 12-week period. A third study published in the Journal of Urology in 2005 found that sildenafil at 100 milligrams taken one hour before sexual activity increased the time to ejaculation and improved overall sexual satisfaction compared to the placebo group in a sample of men with both erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation. 
The study enrolled 96 men and was conducted over a 12-week period. For Hims recommends sildenafil for premature ejaculation as an as and when needed solution, which correlates with the results of these studies, meaning you have to take it a short time before intercourse takes place in order to experience the effects. I couldn't actually find what dosage they're offering on their website, so I can't verify that it's in line with the administered doses in the studies. And finally, for Hims also offer paroxetine. Now, paroxetine is very similar to sertraline in that it's a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, or SSRI, which basically means it increases serotonin levels and dampens dopamine, as mentioned earlier. And like sertraline, it's often used to treat depression, except sertraline does tend to have a slightly broader on-label application being prescribed for OCD, anxiety, and other disorders linked with depression. For him, it's quote, quite a bold claim that paroxetine can help you to last nine to 12 times longer during intercourse. And the source on which they base this claim is from the International Society of Sexual Medicine's guidelines for the diagnosis and treatment of premature ejaculation. But they don't link to a specific study. So let's have a look at the actual clinical studies. The Journal of Clinical Psychopharmacology performed a study in 2002 that enrolled 60 men with premature ejaculation and assigned them to receive either paroxetine at 20 milligrams or placebo for four weeks. The results showed that paroxetine significantly delayed ejaculation compared to placebo and improved sexual satisfaction. On average, the time to ejaculation increased from 0.9 minutes at baseline to 2.8 minutes with paroxetine while the control group showed no improvement. Additionally, 69% of the men treated with paroxetine reported improved sexual satisfaction compared to 11% in the placebo group. Also, the International Journal of Impotence Research performed a study in 2006 that enrolled 138 men with premature ejaculation and assigned them to receive either paroxetine at 20 milligrams or placebo for 12 weeks. The results showed that paroxetine significantly delayed ejaculation compared to placebo, with a mean increase in ejaculatory latency time from 0.9 minutes at baseline to 3.2 minutes with paroxetine, while the control group showed no improvement. Additionally, 63% of the men treated with paroxetine reported improved ejaculatory control compared to 10% in the placebo group. Note, however, there have been studies that have shown that paroxetine may not be effective in treating premature ejaculation. For example, a meta-analysis of seven randomized control trials found that while paroxetine was significantly better than placebo in terms of increasing ejaculatory latency time, the magnitude of the effect was small and the clinical significance was unclear. Another study found that paroxetine did not have a significant effect on ejaculatory latency time compared to placebo. As with sertraline, it's likely important to first understand the underlying cause of your PE first before trying any of these sort of solutions. Because if it's not due to psychological factors, then they're unlikely to produce improvement. And even if your PE is psychologically driven, the actual impact may differ from individual to individual with the improvement levels indicated on the FAHIMS website being the absolute top end, highly optimistic improvement levels that one might experience. So there you have it, a science driven review of the options available from FAHIMS for treating premature ejaculation. I hope you found this video helpful and it helped provide more honest insight into the options when attempting to treat a very sensitive issue like PE. And ultimately, don't forget, it boils down to the satisfaction and enjoyment that you and your partner experience. It's not a test of endurance, and there are other options for extending the experience to ensure that you're both satisfied with the outcome, regardless of how long you last. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. You can do that up here and also below the video. And don't forget to also hit the bell symbol when you do so you can be notified of any new health and wellness videos that we post.